Hi, everybody. I'm Stephanie Manier, and I'm a chartered accountant as well as a yoga teacher. And I combine these two modalities to help business owners to create a highly successful business that's integrated with a beautiful life. I was on the show today and we talked about how to create a really beautiful relationship with money, how to manifest more income and really shift your mindset so that you're in that wealth mindset rather than in a mindset of lack, as well as those practical um, steps that you need to take in order to have a successful business. So come watch the show. It's all about money, but in the most beautiful way. And I like to call it making money beautiful. Welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, where we explore the secrets to achieving financial success while prioritizing personal well-being. I'm your host, Prosper Tarowinga. And today we have a remarkable guest who combines the worlds of finance and spirituality to empower business owners on their journey to prosperity. Joining us today is Stephanie Mania, a chartered accountant and a yoga teacher who helps entrepreneurs achieve their financial goals while feeling wonderful. Stephanie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Fantastic. Now, Stephanie, could you share with us how you blend the practicality of accounting advice and mindset while also manifesting and spiritual um, techniques to support business owners in their financial journey? Mm, Absolutely. Well, I guess to answer that question, I need to give you a little bit of background as to why I do it that way. So I spent, you know, over 12 years working in accounting firms and I always had this thing inside me that was like, you just got to keep going. You're really good at accounting. So just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. And it got to a point where I was like screaming at the universe being like, you know what? I'm done. I can't just keep doing it anymore. I hate it. So I went into business myself and what I didn't count on going into business, you know, I was going in there being like, I've been advising people for years. I know all about this stuff. I'll be fine. But what I didn't expect was that I would have to have this confidence in myself, like this complete belief that I could do it and this complete trust that everything would work out as well. So at the time when I, just after I'd started my business, I was really going through a lot in my spiritual journey and I was spending a lot of time doing yoga and I'd met these two incredible yoga teachers who are still my teachers today and one of them was who I did my training through. And they were guiding me on my spiritual journey. And then I suddenly had this realization one day that what I needed to do was bring in all of this stuff that I was learning and teach business owners this as well, because this was where I was finding my place of peace. But at the same time, I knew that, you know, I'm living in this world that I'm living in. It's about money. I enjoy money. I want to be prosperous. I want to be, you know, wealthy. I want to be rich. All of those things but I also want to feel peace. I want to feel calm and I want to feel like I'm living my purpose as well. So it's, you know, when I started looking at it, I was like, it's not just this one piece. Like I can't just be this business person and then be this spiritual person outside of my business. I needed to start combining them. And the more I started working with smaller businesses, the more I saw that that's how they were feeling too. The ones who were really trying to say, this is business and this is personal were the ones who weren't having a great time. But the people who were starting to combine those things and realized that everything that they were bringing in from their personal lives was affecting their business life and vice versa. So it became this holistic approach. And it was purely based on my own experience and knowing that that was what I needed. Fantastic. That's such a remarkable start to everything else because you combined your life story and both the experiences that you have. And now you've got this unique holistic approach that is really helping you with the confidence and also you trusting in yourself. Now, Stephanie, you would understand as an accountant, um, there's a stat that says that a lot of businesses don't go past the three-year mark. Could you think that is the missing link that is actually stopping a lot of people from, um, like you say, prospering in business? Because if they combine both of those uh, modalities, I think uh, magic starts to happen. Definitely, that's where the magic does start to happen. Um, But the problem is actually, in general, 
so many business owners and people, I'll even generalize it to everybody. There are so many people out there who aren't paying any attention to their money in any way, shape or form. They might be going, oh, I really, really want to get this, but they've got nothing in place in actually to actually get to that point. So, or on the other side, they've, they might have, you know, these goals and then, you know, they're sort of hitting these goals, et cetera, but they actually aren't keeping a bit of a track of their finances. Or of course, there's a combination of all of it. They don't feel like they're good enough to actually earn the money. They don't really know how to manage money in the first place. And they're also ignoring it completely. So all of those factors combined are the worst, the worst possible scenario. But even one of those factors is also going to come into play. I've worked with a lot of businesses in bad cash positions. And what I've found every single time that I've started working with them is they're not paying attention to their numbers. And, you know, that awareness is what we need, which comes from that spiritual perspective, but also from that practical perspective of if you don't know what's going on in there, of course, something's going to go wrong. I love that. You know, Stephanie, when you started talking, you know, you brought in very strong words like I want to be rich I want to be wealthy I want to be prosperous um you know I want to have these things but still having the peace of mind that obviously that we all yearn for now most entrepreneurs struggle with their relationship with money you know what I mean they mm. they often have a shame or it's an ego thing or they 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 I also met this in Australia that is called the tall poppy syndrome people don't want to really venture out of whatever comfort zone society or their family has. And sometimes people have feelings of unworthiness. Now, how do you believe we can actually transform this relationship and create a healthier, more empowering mindset towards money? Well, I think it's like any relationship. So I often um, do a workshop on how to create a beautiful relationship with money. And the way that we always start that workshop is, first of all, identifying what is a toxic relationship? And then second of all, identifying what is actually a healthy relationship. And if we think about that in romantic relationship terms, it's pretty simple, right? You know, you think of things like you want to have trust, you want to have equality within that relationship. There needs to be communication. There needs to be fun. There needs to be attraction. Um, you know, there's loads of different elements that you need to have a healthy relationship. So with money, if you're not communicating with it, so as in it's you're not looking at your numbers, you're not understanding what that they mean, et cetera, you're going to have something wrong in your relationship. If you, you know, if you don't have any trust in your money, you don't believe that it's going to come, it's never there for you. And those are constant thoughts that you're having all of the time. It's not going to be there for you. You know, it's going to not show up when you need it. And you're going to really feel that because that's what you're looking for. And that's what you're expecting. It's the same as in a romantic relationship. So, the first step to healing is to start looking at it in that way of going, okay, well, what is my current relationship with money and how do I want to improve that? What are the key elements in that relationship currently that aren't working, that aren't healthy? And how can I start working on those elements? Absolutely. I mean, where energy goes or where you what you focus on a lot more is is pretty much what you get and you keep alluding this relationship to a romantic relationship. If you stop texting or writing to your loved one, they would just think maybe you've ghosted them and they're not going to uh, show up and be around. So you've gone on a personal journey. And this is something that if I would sit across any other accountant, they'll just be talking about my bass and zero. But can you maybe tell us about your personal journey um, and especially the turning point where you shifted your mindset um, of, you know, if I'm successful to I'm committed to my success, how did this change impact your professional path now? I just first of all want to interject there and say I do love zero. I'm still a big, massive fan of zero, so I'm still an accountant. Um, <laughs> but that shift um, for me happened. I actually remember I was... I would listen to affirmations every morning and it was only, it wasn't actually that long ago because I, when I first started my business, I kind of replicated everything that I was doing. And then I went, oh, hang on a second. I don't want to do that. I want to do this new thing. So then when I was doing the new thing, it, it was taking a lot more belief in myself and belief in this 
change that I could do it and not feeling silly, you know, for combining spirituality and accounting. Because I was just like, oh gosh, please no other accountant look at me because how embarrassing. But people love it. So I was listening to Affirmations and I found this new track on Spotify and it's like a little bit intense. It's this guy and he's an American guy and he's obviously some kind of motivational speaker. And he was talking about the fact that a Navy SEAL doesn't start a mission with the mindset of, you know, if I can, I'll do it. They start the mission with the decision that they've already, they've already made that decision that they're going to complete the mission. So the only thing that's going to stop them is if they die. And I just was there listening to it one morning and I thought, you know what? That's actually absolutely true. The only way I can possibly fail is if I quit. That's the only way I can actually fail at this. And yes, I might make mistakes. We all do. I might run out of money at some stages. Maybe I'll have to go and get a part-time job if this doesn't turn out or that doesn't turn out, et cetera. But at no point will I actually fail unless I quit. So that's all I have to do is just keep going and keep on fine-tuning. Don't get me wrong. I'm not into beating a dead horse either. You know, if you've got a business that's failing, then you need to make some drastic changes to it. Otherwise, it will fail. And, you know, it will get to a point where you're, you know, it's taken, that choice is taken away from you. But in my situation, I was like, I know my numbers. I know, you know, how to run a business financially. And that's the key part of making sure a business is successful. So if I make mistakes in my marketing, in my sales, in the products that I'm selling, et cetera, et cetera, all I have to do is just keep on course correcting, keep on tweaking, keep on shifting until I get to my sweet spot. And whatever I have to do around that to support that, I will do because I am committed to this because I know in my soul, like I know in my belly that this is what I came here to do. Like I've never felt more clear about that in my life because I've never actually been in that position before, I guess. Um, So yeah, once I felt that shift, I went, okay, so now it's not if, so you're taking the word if out of your vocabulary and instead you're saying, how, how do I do this? What do I need to do? What do I need to tweak? So the questions are when I'm feeling like, oh, I'm not really quite getting this or I'm not quite where I want to be. My question is, you know, who do I need to help me? What's going wrong here actually? And where is my focus right now? Absolutely. That is such a remarkable shift in in, in perspective. And obviously for those that are watching right now, I really need you to take heed and pay attention because this, this stuff is profound. And um, you basically are operating and working, um, you know, using the powers that are available to each and every one of us. How can people really tap into this? Because I find that sometimes when people are set in their ways and if you show up and you start telling them, hey, make money beautiful. And they would have been told in the past that money is the root of all evil. You know, what, what sort of responses are you getting uh, from the people and especially the clients that you end up working with? Mm, that's a great question, actually. And something that I definitely wrestled with a little bit for a long time before starting my business. But when I was, I went through a big shift in my life before I started my business where I suddenly went, oh my gosh, look at all those awful things that we're doing to the environment. And I became really, really aware of my impact on the environment. And then what I also realized was that, you know, sometimes it costs more money to buy something that was recycled. Sometimes it costs more money to choose the more eco-friendly option. So what I actually realized was it was an opportunity for me to vote with my dollars. So the more money I had, the more voting power I had basically to say, this is where I want us to invest it because we are the people and we are the power. So what we put our time, money, resources and voice into is actually what ends up happening. And it doesn't always take a day. Sometimes it takes years and years. Like there's all of the big movements that have ever happened in the world haven't been an overnight success, but they have been because a bunch of people said, you know what, I'm not taking this anymore. And I'm going to do everything in my power to make this change happen. And part of that was people investing their money into these causes that they thought were worthy and important. Um, So I always in, sorry, (laughs) I, um, I always encourage people to 
first of all, to bring some awareness to well, what is the power of money? So what would you like to do with it? If you were rich, what would you do with it? You know, would it be the source of evil or would it be actually a really, really amazing thing? Fantastic. And obviously you having this particular incline towards uh, the environment, would that have had, um, you know, a bearing from your upbringing? Because you grew up in a rural setting, right? Uh, you were immersed in nature and embracing the freedom of you riding barefoot, um, or maybe you would ride horses once in a while. Now, is this how you are repaying the universe for having given you such a, um, you know, canvas to start off from yeah I think that's probably where my connection to it comes from you know I did grow up in the middle of nowhere literally uh, where I actually grew up my mum still lives there was one other house within two k's of her house um and it was beautiful and it still is beautiful there's now like six houses so it's getting quite busy there um, but it's just such a beautiful place and there's so much that comes from the earth and, you know, not only that we live off it, you know, we need the food, we need the water, et cetera, we need air, but we also need the beauty of the earth. You know, water, 90% of people, I think I just made that statistic up, but I think like 90% of people would say, I find more peace when I am in nature. I find more beauty when I'm in nature. And it's because, you know, we're created, connected to nature. So, yeah, I think that came from definitely from my upbringing, but also just from looking around and suddenly realising what we were doing and that we weren't being mindful in how we were treating the earth and the effects that that was having on our earth as well. Fantastic. Now, Stephanie, somebody might be sitting here and thinking, oh, wow, I really want um, you know, what she's on and go on the path or the journey that she took, because obviously from the way you're talking, you really sound grounded and at peace with everything that's happening in your life there. Kudos to you for choosing you um, over anything else. Now you have a membership program and I think it's called Small Change, Big Impact, um, mm -hmm. you know, where you provide maybe live sessions on either mindset, bookkeeping and uh, expert uh, topics. Now, how did these sessions contribute to the financial success of your members and um, what can participants expect uh, to gain from joining? Mm. So, yes, it's definitely called Small Change, Big Impact. And I created it because I was working with a lot of bigger businesses at the time. And I, I work with, you know, some smaller ones as well. I've got different size packages. But when I was working with my really big clients, I looked at it and I went, you know what? Every single business owner should have access to this. It's so important. And they can't pay the same amount that, you know, my big clients pay me, but they need this same level of advice. So I created this membership so that smaller businesses could come in and get this advice, make it tailored um, as much as possible in those group situations, but, and also educate themselves. So the idea of it is it's three sessions a month. So it's the mindset session. So we go through, you know, a lot of yogic principles and we apply them to finances. We look at manifesting mindset um, and just generally our main priority is to feel really good about money. Um, the second session is the bookkeeping and the idea of it is just to get shit done. So, you know, as a small business owner, 90% of people don't do their bookkeeping because they've got this one tiny little question and it's just becoming this huge, big block in their lives. And they've got one transaction they can't reconcile. So it just, you know, puts that feeling of um, paralysis on them and they stop doing everything because they have nobody asked that question to. So the bookkeeping session is to one, you've got this time that's dedicated to get your bookkeeping done every month, but also you've got somebody there who you can just pop your hand up and say, hey, I've got this transaction. What do I do with it? And the way that that works is, Everything is still 100% confidential. You don't have to feel like you need to share all of your numbers, although I do encourage that a little bit with my members because it is about building up that bravery and that courage when it comes to finances. But, you know, you can ask me that question. I'll jump into your zero file. I'll have a look. Nobody else can see what I'm doing and I'll explain to the group how to fix a transaction like this and with specifics to your transaction. And then the third session is the expert. So it's about, you know, really getting into my accounting brain and understanding what are the things that you need to be looking for in your business? 
you know, do you need to, um, how can you find out if there's a mistake in your reports? What reports should you even be looking at? How do you know if the numbers are good or bad? Um, you know, how do you know if they're accurate as well? So we go through lots of different topics in the expert sessions, and it's really about you gaining more and more knowledge around the finances of your businesses and also how to run a successful business. Fantastic. And what would be the best way that people can get a hold of all this niceness? Yeah, well, the best way is to go to the website, which I'm sure the link will be in the show notes. I will. Um, and you can go to my website, which is stephaniemanier.com, and you'll make your way to the bookkeeping membership. And via there, you can learn all about it as well as sign up. Absolutely. See, from all the things that you're talking about, there's this talk about people just showing up to an accountant with a box full of receipts. But I'm starting to think it's a box actually full of luggage, mindset issues, societal issues, and everything else that comes along with it. Now, in your experience and in maybe the other people that you've been working with, especially small to medium business owners, have you noticed sort of any recurring patterns, um, you know, especially in mindset um, um, that significantly maybe are impacting the way they should actually be running their business? And maybe what sort of shifts can you suggest? Mm, Absolutely. So I guess one of the most common things that I see is the businesses, well, the business finances either start getting tricky or they were never really a numbers person. And what they do is they just more and more back away from it and are basically hiding under the bed and just in complete avoidance mode. And it's because they're, you know, they're feeling really there's a lot of shame around it that they should know this stuff. They're feeling like it's probably really bad and if they just don't look at it, it will sort itself out eventually. Like they'll kind of just wait until they do make enough money and then they'll go sort it out. Um, But actually both of those things get worse and worse and worse the more that you leave everything in the dark. So my number one thing that I would love people to take away today is bring awareness to your finances. It doesn't matter if they're business finances. It doesn't matter if they're good or if they're bad, please take the time to look at them and just bring that awareness to your money. And even if all you can do is take the first step and to look at your business bank account and your personal bank account every single day, just open it up, just have a look at it, notice the numbers, no judgment on how you're feeling, no trying to shift anything or anything like that. It's just bringing awareness. So you're just starting to say, okay, that's a number. I can see it. I can see those numbers that have gone out. I can see the numbers that have come in. And I'm also just observing everything that I'm feeling as I'm looking at all of these different numbers. And that's all you have to do as a first step. Um, Because yeah, once we start breaking that habit of avoiding, that's really where you can heal this relationship. Absolutely. I'm hearing a lot of healing. I'm hearing a lot of mindset shifts and things of that nature. You know, growing a small to medium business is tough. You know, you grow from marketing, you go to networking, you maybe have staff that are fulfilling the product. Um, And when it all is said and done, numbers is really what uh, makes the business um, you know, tick. And that's where you can check the pulse of whether you're in business or you've got a hobby. Now, what sort of advice, uh, Stephanie, can you uh, give to any aspiring entrepreneurs who are probably just listening to this and say, ah, maybe it ain't all about that because this all sounds a little bit too woo-woo, but they are overwhelmed and uncertain about their financial prospects. How can they build the trust that you now have, the confidence that you now have in yourself and really take steps towards their desired level of prosperity? Well, to be honest, if you don't have your numbers as part of your business, then you don't have a business. And that's, you know, the hard truth of it. So if you're not paying attention to your numbers, I can guarantee you that in the near future, and that near future could be within a year, it could be within two years, could be within a couple of months, you will not have a business anymore. And that's just the hard truth of it. And it's sometimes hard to swallow, but you've got to do something about it. I have a friend and I was talking, she's in marketing and she did a little part of, she sort of started a business, but hasn't completely. 
And I was talking to her about it and I was like, you've just got to come and see me. Like, we have to talk about this. And she was like, I know, I know. But she's like, but I just don't want to. And I was like, well, it's kind of too bad because either you come see me now and it costs you not much money or you come see me later and it costs you twice as much. You've got fines from the ATO. You've got debts to pay. You've got all of these other problems that have compiled on top of it because you didn't just come and see me for an hour. So my advice is get a trusted advisor. You need to have an accountant and not an accountant who just does your tax at the end of the year and says, here you go, I've calculated everything and here's your tax bill. You need to have an accountant who is running you through your numbers and really getting you to understand that the decisions that you make and how that affects the profitability of your business, but also the longevity of your business. You don't always have to be in a profit position, but there has to be a reason to not be in that profit position and there's a plan around it. So, you know, some key pieces of advice is get a forecast in place and understand how were all of those numbers calculated. You don't just want to be like, I'm going to earn 10 grand this month or 20 grand or 15, whatever it might be. You want to actually know, okay, if I'm going to earn 10 grand and this is the mix of my services, this is the mix I'm actually going to sell in this month in order to earn 10,000. Also, the timing of those payments, when are they actually going to come? as well as the timing of the work. So, you know, for this 10 grand, I might have to do 50 hours of work or 100 hours of work, whatever it might be. But when is that 100 hours actually going to happen? Um, Do you have the capacity to do it? And if you don't have the capacity to do it, if you're getting somebody else to help you, you know, how much is that going to cost you? And have you taken into consideration things like superannuation, workers' compensation, you know, um, uh, liens? I just went and combined a few things there. (laughs) Um, meetings, you know, learning, all of that kind of stuff that you need to do. So getting in there and really getting a good understanding of your numbers and having somebody hold your hand through that process is just so important. I was actually just doing a forecast today with one of my incredible clients and we hadn't done a forecast together before, but what we did is we really went in and broke down, okay, these are all the different packages that you've got. This is how much time it takes you to do it. This is how much time it takes your staff to do it you know, this is the different investments. And when we started, she was like, I don't know the answer to any of this. And I was like, I know you don't, but let just, just humor me for a little bit. And, you know, when you go through and you break down and you're like, I know that you do this as part of your project. And I know that you do this as part of your project. So tell me more about that. And then suddenly we've got a really clear project um, of how many hours she needs to invest, how many hours her staff need to invest which then means when we're looking at our forecast and going, okay, well, this is the projected income for the year. Do you actually have the capacity to do that? And the answer to that question was no, she doesn't currently, but she can go and have that conversation with her staff and she can go and have that conversation with her staff. um, What is it, June now? So six months in advance. She's got six months to create this plan to figure out how she can execute this new level of income instead of getting there and being like, oh my God, this is terrifying because I'm now not going to be able to deliver or not delivering, which is the worst. You don't want to be that small business who can't actually deliver a project because why are they going to go back to you? So when you've just, you know, you invest a bit of money to do this planning, it can mean that, you know, you're a, your business is lifelong instead of a couple of years or three years, you know, or one year as well. Fantastic. Nobody wants to just be in business, you know, for a year or for just a day. Now, Stephanie, we've come a long way. You know, we've looked at your barefoot days while you were riding horses and your, um, you know, your yoga time and combining that with accounting. Now, people will be watching this and wanting to know what is next for the yoga <laughs> I love it. Yoga um, what's next? Well, I've actually started branching out and doing talks as well to individuals. So I've got a talk coming up um, to at a university and it's about creating a beautiful relationship with money. So um, I read this article recently, which was a study that was done by Beyond Blue and ASIC. And it was about what had happened, oh, sorry, the effects, I should say, and the interrelationship of finances and mental health. And when I was reading through it, I was like, this is awful. And I felt this huge sense of responsibility that this just cannot be the way 
The other thing that had been on my mind for a while is I've got a couple of nephews and one of them just turned 19 and another's just turned 17. And I was like, you guys need to learn about money. You know, they're both working full time now and I'm constantly having these conversations with them of going, well, you know, what's your budget? And they're going, oh, it's like, Steph, I don't want to talk about a budget. And I'm like, well, fun fact, we're going to talk about your budget. Um, and yeah, and so I just felt this real sense of responsibility that we need to get the word out there that money does not need to make you feel shame, that you are not identified by the amount of money in your bank account, the debt that you have, the earnings that you have, none of those things. Because the thing about money and abundance is it is always enough but we just have to learn how to tap into it and how to feel good about it and also how to understand it so that we can be the ones who are in control. You know, we're the ones driving the car instead of being driven by the shame and fear and identity that money is creating for us. You know, money is currency and it's something that's going to be a part of every single one of our lives and we get to choose what kind of relationship we have with that money. So, yeah, spreading the word. Absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to be sitting in the audience and be like, that's my young accountant. And, <laughs> you know, hopefully people are not just going to pull me out uh, and, and uh, put me in the asylum for being crazy. But I'm <laughs> really, really excited about what you are doing and what you're bringing to the table. Not so many people have the opportunity to be taught about money or to actually have the level of being in a relationship with it. First of all, maybe they grew up and it's scarce. And um, a lot of people are told money is not, um, you know, money does not grow on trees. And eventually that then becomes a mantra that they live by. And if they do happen to be around money because they never had it, they usually want to dispose of it and not want to really interact with it in the way that you are um, basically making it beautiful and 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 so to speak now stephanie thank you so much for sharing your insights and expertise with us today it's been an absolute pleasure it's um a topic that's close to my heart so i'm always excited to share the word i want to tell you something i think you're the first your accountant i've ever come across and your unique blend of accounting mindset, spiritual techniques really offers a refreshing approach to financial empowerment. I really hope um, you have enough energy and the universe really, really uh, puts wind under your wings so that you can um, see and impact a lot more people that might need uh, to hear what you've got uh, in, in, in store. Thank you so much. Yes, me too. I think it's important that we... Yeah, really get this stuff out in the light. Absolutely. And for those that are watching right now, if you want to learn more about uh, Stephanie Manet and her offerings, please visit her website at stephaniemanet.com. I will put the information in the show notes. And I want you to join us next time on the Online Prosperity Show as we continue to explore strategies for achieving abundance and fulfillment in all areas of your life. I've been Prosper Taravinga, and remember, when you prioritize feeling good, prosperity follows. Bye for now.